Matthews Gatos here. In this video, we're going to start Chapter 3, Polynomial Functions, and in this lesson, 3.1, Characteristics of Polynomial Functions. Let's begin with the definition of what polynomials actually are. So polynomials are expressions that have variables and coefficients, which are numbers, that are tied together with addition, subtraction, and multiplication. The variables do not have any negative or fraction exponents. So you can't have any negative or fraction exponents. And also the coefficients of the numbers in front have to be real numbers. So let's talk about what real numbers are. Real numbers are any numbers that are rational, integers, whole numbers, natural, or our smallest ones, counting numbers. And they also include irrational numbers. So the coefficients can't be anything like the square root of a negative or division by zero. So we have real number coefficients and variables that don't have negative or fraction exponents. So let's just make sure we understand exactly what polynomials are. I have a set of eight different expressions here, equations. I want to classify them as polynomial or not polynomial. So let's look at g of x. g of x is a quadratic function, so I'm going to put that as a polynomial. All my exponents are whole numbers, and my coefficients are real numbers. Let's look at h of x. h of x, that's a quartic function, so that's also a polynomial. All my exponents are whole numbers, and the coefficients are real numbers. Let's look at j of x. J of x appears to be a polynomial in terms of the exponents, but if you look at the square root of negative 2 is not a real number. So that means that's not a polynomial. And looking at g of x, g of x has real number coefficients, but look at this exponent of negative 2. It's not a whole number, so that makes this not a polynomial f of x here, this is a polynomial, that's a rational function. h of x, not a polynomial because we have x, the square root of x, which has an exponent of 1 half, so that's not a polynomial. This f of x here, this one is not a polynomial because x is in the denominator, which would mean x has an exponent of negative 1. And then lastly, this must be a polynomial. And notice I have a square root. A square root of 2 is okay because it's a real number. It's an irrational number, but it's a real number. And all my exponents are whole numbers. So that one is a polynomial. Let's look at the graphs of polynomials. So here I have six graphs of polynomials, different types of polynomials. And what you'll notice is that every one of these graphs is a continuous graph. In other words, without lifting up my pencil, I can draw the whole graph. It's continuous. It's one piece. So all of these are polynomial graphs because I can draw it without lifting up my pencil. Let's compare that to these graphs that are not polynomial graphs. So these are not polynomial graphs for various reasons. Some of the reasons are is that they have restrictions. For example, our rational function has a restriction. They have gaps, like this one here has a gap in it. They have sharp points, or they are piecewise functions. Now, the other ones here that I haven't circled are also not polynomials because you'll recognize this as an exponential graph. That's not polynomial. This is a radical graph, not polynomial. And this is a sinusoidal graph, so that's also not a polynomial. So it's important to be able to look at a graph and recognize whether it's a polynomial or not. Okay, let's go through some key terms, and to do that I'm going to use this example of negative 5x to the exponent of 4 plus 3x squared plus 6. So first key term is the degree, and the degree is the highest exponent of the variable. It doesn't have to be in numeric order, just look for the highest one out of all of the x's. So if I look at this one, it has an exponent of 4 and an exponent of 2. The highest one is 4, so my degree is 4. Leading coefficient is the number in front of the variable with the highest exponent. So since we said 4 was the highest exponent, look at the number in front of that. That's a negative 5. Include the sign with your negative or with your leading coefficient. A constant is a number all by itself without a variable. 
So for example, right here, including the sign, the constant would be positive 6. Now, if there is no constant, you know it would be 0. Now, end behavior is the left and the right arms of the graph. What quadrants are they in? Where are they pointing when I read the graph left to right? So if I were to put this into my graphing calculator, it would look like that. And you can see that the arms of the graph are both dropping. They're both pointing down. My left arm is down and my right arm is down. So they go towards quadrants 3 and quadrants 4. Okay, now speaking of the degree, each of the degree behave in a similar way. So odd degree polynomials, those are exponents of 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So our smallest degree one would be a linear function. So linear functions, we spent 10 C studying linear functions. They have arms that point in opposite directions, and they have a slope. If they go from quadrant 3 to quadrant 1, my slope is positive. If the behavior of the graph goes from quadrant 2 to quadrant 4, this one has a negative slope. Each one of these graphs has one x-intercept and one y-intercept. Now let's look at degree 3. Degree 3 are called cubic functions. So I have a couple of different graphs here. So a is your leading coefficient. So where it was the slope in the last one, this is your leading coefficient. When my leading coefficient is positive, notice my arms go from quadrant 3 to quadrant 1, kind of like a positive slope. So this is kind of the same idea as a positive slope. Now when a is negative, similar to a negative slope, they go from quadrant 2 to quadrant 4. So each one of these graphs all have one y-intercept, but you'll notice they have one, two, or three x-intercepts. So my question is, for a cubic function, why can't you have zero x-intercepts? So if we look at the graph, in particular the end behavior, see how the ends of the graph continue infinitely in opposite directions? So infinitely to the positives, infinitely to the negatives. So at some point, this graph has to cross the x-axis. So that's why cubic functions have at least one x-intercept. Okay, let's talk about our even degree functions. So this would be degree 2, 4, 6, or 8. So if we look at degree 2, that takes us back to our 20 level math where we studied quadratics. So a is your leading coefficient. So when a was positive, the graph opened up, having a minimum value. When a was negative, the graph opens down, having a maximum value. Now for quadratics, we know that they can have 0, 1, or 2 x-intercepts, but they will always have 1 y-intercept. So here would be an example of a graph that has 0 x-intercepts. It would just be something that maybe opens up and thins up. A graph that has one x-intercept, that would be an example of a perfect square trinomial. So it touches the x-axis just once. And you can see both of the examples that I have already are two x-intercepts. Now, quadratics will always have one y-intercept. So at some point, you're always going to cross the y-axis. Now, another even degree is a quartic function, degree 4. And notice that behaves very similarly in terms of the end behavior to a quadratic. So when a is positive, it opens up, meaning it has a minimum. When a is negative, it opens down, meaning that a, there is a maximum value. Now for quartic functions, again, you're always going to have one y-intercept, but you could have 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 x-intercepts. And you see different examples of each one of those scenarios. And then let's talk about, lastly, degree 0. Degree 0 is a constant function. It has no x. So it's a horizontal line. So since it has no x value, x to the 0 equals 1, it's only going to be this equation, y equals to b, which is, of course, 
the y-intercept. So each one of these graphs, if b is positive, will be above the x-axis. If b is negative, will be below the x-axis. They extend depending on what quadrant they're in, but they extend left to right. So when they're above the origin, they go from quadrant 2 to 4. When they're below the x-axis, they go from quadrant 3 to 4. Now, all of these graphs will have 0 x-intercepts with one exception. There is one graph that is a constant function that will in fact have infinite x-intercepts, and that is the equation y equal to 0 or the x-axis. That is the only graph of a constant function that will have infinite x-intercepts. All the other ones have no x-intercepts. So let's look at the little rule about x-intercepts. The degree is the maximum number of x-intercepts. It doesn't mean that's how many it's going to have, it's just the maximum it could have. And the constant term is always the y-intercept. The reason is, is because we always let x equal to 0 and then solve for y, and that is your y-intercept. So let's look at this table below. This function here, x squared, sorry, x exponent 5 plus x squared minus 4. The degree is 5, which means I will have a maximum of 5 x-intercepts. The y-intercept is the number all by itself, including the sign. That's negative 4. So the y-intercept is 0, negative 4. In this one here, my degree of my function, highest exponent, is a 1. So I have x to the 1. And that means it will have one x-intercept, a maximum of one. The number all by itself, five, is the y-intercept, so zero and five. y equals to negative three. So that's really x to the exponent of zero. So that will have zero x-intercepts because it's only passing through five, or sorry, negative three. It's only passing through negative three, making the y-intercept zero and negative three. In this graph here, x squared minus 3x cubed, 3 is the highest exponent, meaning it can have a maximum of 3x intercepts. It does not have a constant, making the y-intercept 0, 0. Okay, in this one here, I want to put kind of what we've done together and try and match each equation with its graph. So, these are all cubic functions. So to look at these, what I'm going to try and figure out is perhaps the y-intercept would help me. Let's look at each one of those. So this is a cubic function, a negative leading coefficient, and a positive y-intercept. So I have a y-intercept of 2. So there are two graphs that have a y-intercept of 2. So this one here has a y-intercept of 2. This graph here also has a y-intercept of 2. So the difference between these graphs is going to be the end behavior. So in this graph, I go from quadrant 3 to quadrant 1, which means that it must have a positive leading coefficient. This one goes from quadrant 2 to quadrant 3, so kind of like a negative slope. I know this one has a negative leading coefficient. So let's piece all of that together. So here, y-intercept of positive 2 with a negative leading coefficient, that graph would, or that equation would match with this graph here. Okay, this one over here, positive x-intercept of positive 2, positive leading coefficient, that means that this equation would go with this graph. Okay, in our last ones, I have x-intercept at positive, sorry, y-intercept at positive 6, and here I would have a y-intercept at negative 6. So for these ones, I can just look at the y-intercept to help me. So y-intercept of negative 6 would make this equation go with this graph, and y-intercept at positive 6 would make this equation go with that graph. So you can see the parts of the graph can help you identify the equations or match the equations. Of course, you could always put this into your graphing calculator to see if it actually works or not. So to summarize the lesson, odd degrees, the end behavior really depends on the sign of the leading coefficient. So if the leading coefficient is positive, I go from quadrant 3 to 1. If the leading coefficient is negative, I go from quadrant 2 to 4. With odd degree function, the arms of the function go in opposite directions. 
you can have up to the degree number of x-intercepts. So minimum of one because the arms extend infinitely in opposite directions up to a number of x-intercepts equal to the degree. Cubic functions, linear functions, quartic function, any odd degree function does not have a max or a min value. Okay, even degree functions. So these ones, when the leading coefficient is positive, it opens up. So your end behavior is from quadrant 2 to 1. If the leading coefficient is negative, those graphs open down. And the end behavior is from quadrant 3 to quadrant 4. Now these arms go in the same direction. Because they go in the same direction, they could, the graph could be entirely above or entirely below the x-axis, meaning you can have 0, but up to the degree number of x-intercepts. You'll always have one y-intercept. The leading coefficient is also tied to the range, so if it's positive, it opens up. y is greater than the min. If the leading coefficient is negative, it opens down, so y is less than or equal to the max. So this is a nice little introduction to polynomials. We'll get into a lot more detail as we go along. But my question is, what do you call a parrot who will not eat? Well, that's a polynomial. So I hope this lesson helped. You guys can go ahead and do your practice questions and then move on to your textbook questions. Of course, D2, D2L has your detailed solutions. Hope this video helped, and I look forward to seeing you for the next. The next.